I'd like to introduce to you Sandeep Rao, one of India's only visually impaired comedians. Sandeep's comic foresight is unlike his sight. It is rather clear and sharp around the edges. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Can we uh, just start with, can we get a big round of applause for everyone you've seen this evening? Um, and of course, for Feroz and his entire team from SAP, who I met a few weeks back, and they said, we want you to be a part of the summit. And I said, why? I haven't done anything. Um, so recently, recently I, was, um, I was ranked India's funniest partially blind English stand-up comic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, then I realized I was the only one. So <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. It's, it's, it's lovely uh, being here, honestly speaking. Um, um, Stand-up comedy is something which I love doing, and I came, came across it a few years back. I, I was doing various other things before that. I'll tell you about that soon. But the concept, the art form, as well, as, as stand-up comedy as an art form is still a little, um, not underappreciated, but it's not known to many people, and they get a little bit confused as to what, they, what to expect. Uh, I, I got a call from a lady recently. Uh, she um, asked me to come and perform for her kitty party. And um, I said, no, I have self-respect. I won't be doing this. Uh, so she offered me money, so I did it. Um, <laughs> so that's where my self-respect ends. <laughs> and it was really weird because it was a very lovely person. I went to her house and I expected a basic requirement of a stage and a microphone and just something where they can hear me. Um, I got mango juice and a garage to perform in with about 10 ladies who were just giggling all the time in their mid-40s. It was lovely, you know, dream come true. And, um, <laughs> and the best part about it is, is that I started my performance, my stand-up comedy performance, and five minutes into the comedy show, uh, I hear a lady in the back going, why is he still talking? <laughs> At which point I realized, when they said performance, <laughs> they expected something else. <laughs> I don't know if these tight jeans give it away, but I'm not that kind of man. <laughs> uh, but um, when I was eight, I was diagnosed with uh, an eye condition called juvenile macular degeneration. It's, uh, it's for short, it's JMD, juvenile macular degeneration. I'm sure many of you know it. For those of you who don't, it's basically where I've lost central vision in both eyes. But I have peripheral vision in, some, in, 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 the si in both eyes. Um, it's good. It's good because I've gone on a f quite a few blind dates. And... Uh, <laughs> Realized later that it's men I'm with. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's weird because I used to go on these dates, and the best part about going on these dates is I used to go earlier. So I sit on the right table. Because I've been on situations where I've been at the wrong table with a couple for like an hour. And they're like, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, I didn't realize. You know, I thought it was just three of us. People are into that these days. I didn't realize <laughs> that it was an open invitation. <laughs> but um, the nice thing about this uh, eye condition is that I get to see a little bit I am partially blind and not fully blind, and I get to see a little bit, uh, but the believability factor is a little bit hard to explain to people, um, especially when people, I think the best thing this conference is going to increase is it's going to increase dialogue and conversation, um, and I think it's much more um, interesting for us and much more, uh, 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 what do you call it, better for us if people ask us what the problem is as opposed to making assumptions. And uh, it's nice when people come and ask me, they're like, uh, what condition do you have? And I say, I have juvenile macular degeneration. They're like, wow. <laughs> because they have no clue what it is. And they come back the next day after reading up on, reading on, uh, on the situation, reading up on the condition. Next day, they read up on it online. And they come back the next day and say, you have juvenile macular degeneration, right? Eat spinach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Popeye, my friend. But anyway, it's... <laughs> It's like the solution. I didn't know that, really. And they send me for faith healing. My people, some people send me for faith healers. And it's lovely, faith healing. I think to each person his own, if you believe in that or you believe in that. And they say, you always go with faith. As you can buy it at the shop, you know. Go with faith, you'll be fine. And I went to this faith healer, and um, I stood in uh, front of him. And I said, I'm here. He said, no, no, don't worry, my friend. Don't worry, son. I will cure your eyesight. I said, how did you know I had an eye problem? He said, because I'm sitting here. And I said, oh, it's, sorry. It was weird. So needless to say, he said, I was cured. I turned around and I tripped. I said, really? And he said, no, OK. So things happen. Um, the beautiful thing is people don't believe me when I tell them I am partially blind. Because you know, I, I, I don't, from the from first looks, I don't look like I'm a person who needs assistance. 
Uh, typically, when I tell people I'm partially blind, uh, I'm like, I'm partially blind, the first response is, why? <laughs> I don't know, I slept with your daughter, I don't know what the reason is. Um, <laughs> no, the second thing is they're like, wait, if you're blind, where's your guide dog? Where's your cane? I'm like, uncle, I can't find them. And <laughs> they don't... It's... <laughs> So it's hard, the believability thing, because in Indians' minds, um, everything's extremes. Everything's extremes. Either, you can, either you're blind or you can see. Either you're in a wheelchair or you can walk. Either you're retarded or you vote for Rahul Gandhi. It's, it's, it's two extremes, right? It's just, <laughs> it's just two extremes. And <laughs> oh, God, I'm glad the politicians left. Um, <laughs> But um, what I've realized is uh, there are a lot of comp there's a lot of competition, and I think people um, do tend to, to sort of generalize the disability community as one. And definitely, hello, yeah, well, definitely. I think the politician joke. Something's happened. The mic's cutting off now. <laughs> uh, we are definitely one group and working towards one cause. But having said that, there is competition amongst us as well. Uh, I remember when I was growing up, my mom used to come and tell me, um, "I want you to do something with your life." grow up, be someone, be someone who works hard. And I used to always say, no, I can't see, you know? And I used to use that as an excuse for my inactivity. And I realized, uh, South Indian community especially, because I'm South Indian, um, the aunties especially have one approach for dealing with disabilities, right? It's not necessarily organizing committees, organizing uh, workshops, organizing awareness programs. Their one opinion, one approach to disabilities is Papa. It's like, it could be anything. He can't see Papa, he can't see. <laughs> and I realized, right, my aunts in my community, um, I do have a, another disability which I, I don't really talk too much about to people because it sort of offends them. Um, I am Brahmin. <laughs> so um, that's why the tight jeans. <laughs> do we have other Brahmins over here? All right, time to have a caste party. What do you say? Let's do this, right? <laughs> And I would love to see my ancestors party. Bunch of Brahmin boys get together. Hey, Sridhar, let's party. But wait, man, we can't drink, we can't eat meat, we can't smoke. What shall we do? Let's read. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> Bro, this is an epic. Yeah, it is an epic idiot. It's Ramayana. <laughs> it's <laughs> Brahmin man going, hey, my thread is longer than yours. Anyway. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm not your typical Brahmin. Uh, I'm not your typical Brahmin. In fact, my family looks down upon a lot of the things that I do uh, because unlike other Brahmins, I have a lot of vices because I do drink, I do eat meat, I do smoke, I respect women. Um, <laughs> not acceptable at all. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's good. So uh, having said, I'm single because of that. And uh, <laughs> because most men my age have a fear of arranged marriages in my community. Um, but strangely, in my community, no one's ever approached me. I don't know whether it's because lack of scope or lack of horoscope. I don't know what it is, right? Uh, but my aunt still, because it's inbred in them to find me a girl. So they, they feel that it's just because I have one disability, it's their responsibility to find me another girl with any other disability on the planet. It doesn't have to match. But I don't know why they do that. But anyway, I, I, so I finally did um, take up comedy and I suppose the lack, for, lack, lack of being single, I'm single, so I just do comedy, it's insecurity personified with attention, it's lovely. Um, what, what I realize is um, it's, it's, many co comics have the fear of coming up on stage and not getting a laugh. Uh, I have a much more important fear and much more a larger fear, with, and that's not to find the mic. So what I used to do is I used to ask the organizers to put a white tape on the mic stand, and so that'll help me find it with the spotlights and all that. Uh, and I stopped doing that because I started making a habit out of it. And I started putting this white, tape on my girlfriend, so I couldn't find her in public places, and she wasn't too happy with this, right? <laughs> because uh, it's really weird, and um, so the thing is, I wasn't expected to, uh, expecting to do stand-up comedy today, I was in fact supposed to help with the auction, but anyway, this is, um, and I asked Feroz, should I be clean, and he said a little bit, you know, <laughs> and so maybe I've already crossed the line, Feroz, but I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, um, I did a bunch of things. Um, when I was in India, I think my mom always had an intention of sending me abroad because I think the education system in India still has a long way to go to get to the power of the United States and the UK and Europe in general, I suppose. Because in my school, when I was growing up, my entire school's approach to disabilities was extra time for our exams. 
irrespective of the disability, irrespective of what the problem was, extra time. It's like, how about a... I, in fact, went to get into a law admission at the University Law College in Bangalore, and I met the principal of the law college, who was quite a nice person, and he said, um, no problem, Mrs. Rao, we'll take care of your son. We have provided scribbler for him. I said, you mean scribe, sir? He said, no, no, scribbler, I'll give <laughs> So my mom did send me abroad, and uh, like other mothers, she had a dream of sending her son to the UK. I think a lot of Indian parents had this dream of saying, I want my child to go to Oxford, to Cambridge, to speak like this, come back, not get a job. It's, it's, it's a dream, right? Uh, my mom had a similar dream, but she got her geography a little wrong. Because she sent me to study all the way at the University of Wales in Swansea. Thank you, a few people already laughing at my academic prowess. Uh, for those of you who don't get that reference, it's like telling your child you love them, you have a lot of dreams for them, a lot of hopes for them. Uh, then end up sending them to IIPM. It's not going to work. It's the best situation in that, you might get a ponytail. I'm just, just, just saying. <laughs> um, but I did get my degree there in political science, beer, and sociology. Um, the second one is the best. It's a double major in that. And uh, so I got my degree in political science and sociology and moved back to India and did what every other political scientist and sociologist does. Um, I joined the IT industry. Yeah, it was lovely. <laughs> because I did a bunch of jobs before, uh, like in, 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 before the IT industry as well. I, in fact, worked in radio for a while. And um, then I realized I was asked to be a voiceover artist for many of these ads you hear on radio. And I got extremely offended because the quality of the ads we have on radio in India are awful. In fact, recently I was in the car and I heard a radio for these jewelers in Bangalore called Sri, Sri Krishna Chetty and Son Jewelers. And they're having a sale in their store, and this is how the ad went. It said, Shri Krishna Chetty, Jewelers and Sons, presents to you the Pearl Harbor promotion. <laughs> For those of you who don't get history, <laughs> Pearl Harbor is not something you promote through a sale. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, what would you have next? Monthly developers present to you the 9-11 construction offer. It's like, <laughs> really? <laughs> Are you going to buy those apartments? They were just here last week, so I don't know what happened. It's, there were two towers, I don't know. <laughs> and Because um, <laughs> we deal with a lot of people in, in, in India especially who are um, trying to make a difference, but at the same time they have no clue what they're supporting. Right? Uh, I'm not, I think I, I, I'm lovely to see all of you here today because I think most of you are here for the right reasons. But I see a lot of people um, who come for these shows of mine when I do it in art galleries. And um, they're a little presumptuous. In fact, I think they're just there to be seen on page three uh, and drink white wine, I suppose, which they call Pinot Noir, which I don't know any other is. And I, in fact, overheard a couple the other day at an art gallery, and the wife was describing the painting to her husband in artistic terms. And I was just overhearing because that's what I like to do. And uh, she was like, darling, look at that painting. Doesn't every brushstroke remind you of how the artist was violated as a child by a goat? Doesn't the canvas represent the mindscape of the landscape that is our dreams, that is our future, that is our hope? And I turned around and said, dude, I think that's the wall. <laughs> I can't see, but you guys are obviously looking at the wrong thing. You know? <laughs> but uh, finally, what I ended up doing is that um, I did join the IT industry. And uh, honestly speaking, it's really nice to see what SAP is doing here today because they aren't just an IT company. They're offering themselves to be a lot more than that because... Um, Unlike other people, I had a very bad experience in IT because I worked for a terrible company. Uh, unfortunately, I can't tell you the name up on stage this evening. <clears throat> Microsoft. Um, <laughs> no, no, just, that's just a joke. That's just a joke. Uh, it was Satyam. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, the, the reason I, was, um, I hated my job is because I was hired to be a copywriter for the IT industry. Thank you, sir. One person. <laughs> No one had a clue what I did at that office. People would come up to me every day and say, wait, Sandeep Rao, you're that copywriter. I said, yes, I am. By any chance, are you that guy who writes copyright 2012 at the bottom of the website? <laughs> and I'd look at him with love and say, if I did that, it would be more work than I actually do. So, <laughs> because if you work in IT, you know that it's impossible to proofread and edit, edit anything. That was my job description, proofread and edit content, but it's impossible to proofread and edit anything because everything in IT is filled with abbreviations. Like, I would get requests for work in emails every day that would go, Dear Sandeep, PFA PDF. <laughs> PLS do the needful, revert by EOD. So, FYI, FYA, FYP, F your dad, F your mom, F your sis. Um, <laughs> 
VP, VVIP, VD, VVID, return ASAP. TK regards sincerely, best wishes, Rakesh. P.S. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm really glad, and I'm going to say these last few things before I go, is it's really nice to see all of us getting together to make uh, some sort of difference, uh, even if it's a dent, it's a dent, in, in, um, in India, because I think even though it's a lot more support in foreign countries with the infrastructure, I, I really feel in India it's, it's the people, I still don't know what to expect, right? Because I think we need to educate people into disabilities. Um, in fact, I was flying to Bombay the other day and at the airport I asked the lady at the counter, I said, excuse me, madam, I'd like some assistance. I'm partially blind. Can I get some assistance to get to the aircraft? She said, no problem, sir. I'll give you a wheelchair. <laughs> so it's these kind of situations which make it a little bit weird. Because the thing is, I did live in America and they do have a support system there. And I... Honestly speaking, I'm glad I was born in India, even though we didn't have many good things in school with support, but I had a great family who have a great family who supports everything I do. But I could get away with everything in India being a partially blind person. I drove in India for five years, and no one could tell. <laughs> no one would tell. And the beautiful thing is I actually drove, and I, the reason I stopped is fortunately it wasn't too bad, but I actually stopped one day because I met with an accident. I crashed my car into a stationary Jeep, and uh, that was quite embarrassing. I, I didn't get hurt, no one got hurt. But I think what was more embarrassing was that that particular Jeep belonged to a Christian missionary. And uh, the next day I went to pay for the damages and the man said, son, don't give me your money. Let Jesus show you the way. And I said, with all due respect, sir, Jesus could have shown me where the Jeep was, but he didn't. So I think that's fine. Can I take my money back? No, no, I'll take it now. <laughs> So we do have a lot of problems, and I'm glad as Indians we're addressing it finally. Because if you look around the world, there are a lot of other problems which are going wild, and people are going crazy about it, especially in Europe and in America. There are problems like global warming, which are driving people mad. Everyone's like, global warming, the polar ice caps are melting, water levels are rising, people are going to get submerged in water. Indians earlier would be like, global warming. Oh, hey, turn on the AC, bro. What is this? <laughs> water pollution, call that aqua guard guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest problem we have in India, of course, is, of course, population explosion. And uh, I think the Chinese proved that it's a problem that can be addressed by introducing the one-child policy. And we Indians, of course, approached it with our own way. Uh, we elected Manmohan Singh. <laughs> He's an intelligent man, great man, respect for him. And his advice to us was very good. It was, oh, my fellow Indians, continue reproducing, but wear protection. Sonia, it's okay? No, it's okay. <laughs> I hope my mic doesn't get cut off now. Last joke, last joke. <laughs> no, in fact, he's a, it's a, it makes sense. Protection, protection, prophylactics does prevent, does prevent, of course, prevent childbirth. But my problem is that India's growth rate and population is increasing at an extremely rapid rate. But while this is happening in India, in Western countries, Norway, Finland, Sweden, Denmark, the population growth rate has dropped at a drastic rate. I don't know if you've noticed, but these are cold countries. <laughs> it's just logic. When cold, friction, heat, right? Just, it's logic. Thank you, madam. She's like, of course it is. Because we Indians don't follow logic. Have you seen Tamil Nadu? <laughs> High to summer, 48 degrees Celsius, 98% humidity. The man goes out with his wife. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's not, it's, the Indians don't follow logic. The reason why I bring this up, it's not to embarrass or offend anyone. The reason I'm worried about this problem is because if these Western countries continue at such a dropping growth rate and we Indians continue at such an increasing growth rate, ladies and gentlemen, the day is not very far when even reproducing gets outsourced to India. <laughs> Thank you. That's my time. I've been Sandeep Rao. Thank you very much. Thank you.